To the fallout now from a political shakeup in Indiana. One of the longest serving U.S. senators just lost his bid to win a term. We're talking about 80 year old Republican Senator Richard Lugar, considered one of the leading experts on foreign policy in the U.S. Congress. Tea Party backed candidate Richard Murdoch, who defeated him in the primary, will now face Congressman Joe Donnelly to try to win Lugar's seat in November. So let's take a look at the big picture now. With a Tea Party backed candidate ousting Vietnam, uh, veteran Senator Richard Lugar, what does it mean for the presidential election? Joining us now, Mary Catherine Hamm. She's with The Daily Caller, also a Fox News contributor. And Marjorie Clifton, former consultant to President Obama's campaign and the principal of Clifton Consulting. Mary Catherine, does this mean that the death of the Tea Party, the rumors of the death of the Tea Party, have been greatly exaggerated? Well, yeah, I've always thought that's the case. The fact is that a lot of these folks who got involved maybe for the first time in politics in 2009 or 10 have figured out, oh, on a local level, I can become a chair head or a precinct head or what, those kind of things and really gotten involved a little bit in local politics in a way they hadn't before and inside the party in a way they hadn't before. And I think you see that in things like this upset uh, by Murdoch of Luger, a longstanding senator. And it may be harder with a Tea Party candidate, a newcomer to the political scene, to keep that seat, although Indiana, a pretty red state. Uh, but this is a message to folks who've been in Washington a long time, maybe don't come home too often, that they need to be careful. Marjorie Clifton, is it a message to President Obama and the Democrats? No, I, I think that so far we've seen that the Tea Parties have effectiveness at the primary level, but we haven't seen it at a greater level. Even in the presidential primaries, they really weren't able to organize and coordinate around one candidate. So I don't think this is a given. I think this is a unique election in that Luger is, one, he's an 80-year-old man. He's been, he's served six terms. And frankly, the news of him having not lived in the state for the past 36 years meant that he sort of missed that organization of the farm team, the people at home, that, that really were the backing he needed. I mean, I think this is indicative of a general trend that's happening in both an and Democratic Party towards the, uh, moving away from the moderate, a, a, an unwillingness to be more bipartisan, to have those conversations across the aisle. And I find it rather alarming, to be quite honest. Well, Mary Catherine, we have seen, you know, John Kerry, for instance, the uh, one of the Democratic icons in the Senate lamenting Richard Lugar's uh, defeat. Vice President Biden sent out a tweet. Uh, here, let me read it to you. The Senate lost a brilliant strategic mind, a man with absolute integrity. He will be missed. If Democrats are lamenting this man's defeat, is that a good thing or right. a bad thing? Look, he was, he was well respected. He was smart about foreign policy. He had a lot of skills. Those skills weren't easy to sell back home, and that's why he lost by a pretty large margin and folks are looking at and I, I think it's true of both Democrats and Republicans the Tea Party uh, is a very specific example folks saying look this is the old way of doing business you guys are all buddy buddy and you make these deals that cost us a lot of money we're gonna send somebody new to try and do things a different way and I think I think that's just the way things are going yeah if, if collegiality has been the order of the day in the Senate uh, uh, Marjorie I mean they're 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 going to be sending somebody to Washington to replace him. Something's going to yeah. have to get done. Maybe it'll just get done in a different way. Well, I don't know. I, I think moving away from collegiality is never a good thing. And I, I think the exit of Olympia Snow, now Orrin Hatch's race being contested, these are not good signals, I think, to the American people. And I think it's been indicative of a larger conversation that's happening in the media. But, but, and this but, but wait a minute. I mean, the American well, yeah. people are electing people to represent them. They are, but they're organizing in different ways. And I think what's going to be interesting to see, I mean, as we're looking at states like Wisconsin uh, with Barrett's race, it's, it's, it's a question of can people organize and who is the voter turnout? And right now, even in the same-sex uh, um, amendment that just passed in North Carolina, who's turning out to vote? And in general, I think there's actually been... Uh, there's been a decline in the number of people that are turning out and the number of party members that are turning out and this disillusionment I feel that's happening in a lot of these elections if you look at the actual numbers. So I, I think that in general the conversations I'm hearing and the, talking with a cab driver and talking with people on the street is this complete disillusionment with Congress with their lack of their ability to get anything done that in itself is indicative of the downsides of not having bipartisan conversations not reaching across the aisle and not being willing to make deals their deals aren't getting done Mary Catherine your take on that well I think the bottom line is that being friends with a bunch of really powerful people in Washington DC isn't enough to get you elected and shouldn't be enough for you to take your election for granted. You have to sell yourself to the people back home. You have to yeah. make them believe that you're doing things responsibly, and I don't think he did that. Another thing that 
I think is going on here is, uh, you know, Marjorie says that the Tea Party may be not great at organizing around a, a certain candidate in the presidential primary. I do think that's true, but I think they've been concentrating some of their efforts on things like this, on Senate fights, and mm -hmm. will continue to do that in the general election and will have an impact on Senate and House races. Mary Catherine Hamm and Marjorie Clifton, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Well, a huge new development.